right, good morning, everyone. It is Sunday morning, August the 30th, 2020. Welcome to our virtual worship service this morning for Horton Bend United Methodist Church. <coughs> and good morning, everybody that has joined, whether on the phone or online through Zoom. Morning, Joey. Good morning. Morning, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Laura. Morning, Susan. Morning. Morning, Good morning. Morning. <laughs> morning. <laughs> There's got to be a John boy on there somewhere. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. Hey. There he is. <laughs> yep, I'm here. John Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. All right. Um, good to have everyone with us this morning. And uh, Laura, hope you had a good birthday on Thursday. And uh, very nice. Thank you. That's great. For those of you who can see me, you'll notice that I'm wearing a, a sweater. Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, it's nice to be able to be in the air condition and, and wear a sweater and all. <laughs> I think it's because you have your Christmas tree up. You think it's December. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got well, a blanket. Actually, I'm going to preach today. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's good to have each one of you with us. And uh, even though I don't get to see him, I understand John Allen's in town. Yeah. Uh, John, it's always good to have you uh, closer to us, and uh, thank you for joining us today. But uh, anyways, if you would, uh, just be, be thinking if you have any prayer requests. i got a, a good long list here uh, to share with you, but uh, I just want to open our uh, uh, service with a word of prayer. So let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, beautiful day. Uh, we understand that uh, storms are coming, so I ask you to uh, watch over us and keep everyone safe uh, that are in the paths of any storms that might come our way. Lord, we thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful church family that we have uh, and enjoy and ask a blessing on everyone associated with it. For all these things we ask in Jesus' name today, amen. Okay, uh, do we have any announcements that we need to make? Any announcements? They're going to do the pressure washing tomorrow instead of the 22nd weather permitting. Wow. He had a cancellation and filled it with our request. Okay. Pretty good chance of rain tomorrow, but uh, you know maybe it'll hold off long enough for them to do it. And if any of you can, I don't know if you've noticed, when it's been pressure washed before, you go by, and I mean, it is just, it's like a glow of light on it's that chart. It's so white and beautiful. It makes a big difference when it's pressure washed. So go by and see it. Yeah. Always looks nice. Uh, and uh, just uh, want to uh, remind everybody of a, a couple of dates uh, that are coming up. Uh, September 26 is the annual conference, and it's going to be virtual this year. Um, I'm not. I, I think that anybody can join it that they want to, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, I know that uh, me and Jerry are required to. to be a part of it, but just want to remind everybody about that. Uh, the Sunday before that is going to be a training session on the 20th. And, uh, and then later on in, uh, in October, I believe it's the 18th, uh, we will have our charge conference and that will be at Rainbow City First Methodist Church there on Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. Uh, and just uh, just a reminder, uh, we got to have uh, the pastor's salary set, the uh, the officers uh, approved for next year, and then of course I have to turn in our 
um, as far as conference reports, which I'll take care of those. Um, and I think that's all the announcements right now. Anybody else have anything? Okay. Uh, I, I'll read uh, down b before we uh, uh, get everybody muted here. Uh, read down the, the list of, of prayer requests that we have. Uh, we got Sheila Evans, uh, Linda Farley, Joe Nichols. Uh, Jay's continuing to recover from surgery, and, and I assume he's doing okay. He's he's getting there. He's had kind of a rough night last night, but better this morning. Okay. Well, just. Give him a big war eagle from all of us. <laughs> uh, we've got Tim and Joanna Lett who are recovering. Uh, Paul Schrader, Stan Phillips recovering. Uh, Matt Alexander, Tony Hilly, uh, all patients in healthcare facilities. Uh, pray for the Potters, the Maxwells, the Mintons. Uh, McGuffey's patients specifically, we know of a lot of uh, illness there. I pray for our church, uh, Sonny and Beverly Morrison, uh, those that are cleaning up from all the weather damage, uh, uh, Doris uh, Moon's cousin, uh, Kathy Livingston's family, uh, Christina Templeton, Roger Music, uh, Jackie Lewis's son, Luke, uh, all the frontline workers, health and first responders, and pray for our schools, mm -hmm. the children, and the teachers. Okay. Martha so, Bigum. Pray for Martha Bigum. And my brother David, David Minton on there. He's having a lot of pain from foot surgery. Okay. Thank you. John, and pray for Diane Phillips. Uh, so, so just put Stan and Diane on there. Any others we need to add? I have two requests. Okay. One is Helen Mitchell, Shirley's mom. At, she's at, she is at McGuffey's, but she's experiencing a lot of pain and difficulties. Um, Second, Palmer and Virginia Rowe, that they've been to some of our Sunday night singings. Their daughter-in-law, Holly, lost her father two weeks ago, and then last night, unexpectedly, she lost her mother. So she's lost both of her parents in two weeks. Wow. So let's pray for that family there. It's very difficult right now. Amen. That's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Any, any others we need to add this morning? Okay. We will lift all these up in prayer time in, in a little bit. So I guess, Joey, we'll turn it over to you for a little music. All right. And the songs this morning will be Mansion Over the Hilltop, Just a Little Talk with Jesus, and what a day that will be. Hope you enjoy the music this morning.
All right, and Joe, I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Still having a little trouble maneuvering this thing, but I figured it out, it appears. Uh, great, uh, great scene there from our Sunday nights. And uh, uh, boy, uh, I miss those times getting together. Uh, I, I'm just, I was just sitting here trying to figure out how I got wrangled into that quartet on that last song there. Uh, it probably had something to do with Pat, I imagine. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it does. <laughs> to take that up with her. She, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that there were more qualified people in that audience than me to be up there. But uh, uh, needless to say, it was still a blessing though. Uh, it really was uh, wonderful. And uh, I, uh, I long for the day where we can get back together and, and uh, and enjoy those special times again. And I know you all uh, join me in that same sentiment. Uh, at this time, I would invite uh, each one of you uh, to join me uh, in affirming our faith as we recite the Apostles' Creed, uh, number 881 in the Methodist hymnal. You know, most everybody knows it by heart. I invite you to, to join me now. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And at this time, I would uh, ask you to join me in prayer uh, over the offering. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good and perfect gifts that come our way. We thank you uh, especially for the, the generous folks who have continued to, to give their part. And Lord, at this time, I ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings that we are about to receive. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Joe, turn it back over to you for our prayer time this morning. Thank you, Joey. And uh, just in case uh, anyone may have forgotten, uh, God has blessed us beyond our imagination. And uh, that song was a great reminder uh, of how great God is. And uh, while we acknowledge how great he is today, uh, I invite you now to go with me in prayer as we lift up uh, our thoughts and prayers and requests to him. Let's bow our heads. 
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just heard the song, How Great Thou Art. And, and Lord, from the bottom of our hearts, uh, we acknowledge that today and every day. Uh, how wonderful you are. Lord, how good you are to us. Uh, an undeserving people. But it's not about what we deserve. It's all about how much you love us, you care for us, your concern for us. And Lord, for that, Lord, today we are truly thankful. Lord, we have uh, listed uh, a long list of names and families and situations and lives. Uh, Lord, we lift them up to you today. And, and especially, Lord, we, we lift up all of the uh, unspoken prayers that uh, have been acknowledged through lifted up hands in our hearts. Lord, we sincerely pray today that your will be done. For we acknowledge that is a perfect will. It's a perfect solution. It's a perfect answer to our prayers. Lord, in the, in the world that we live in, we see another month coming to a close. Lord, we thank you for the first 30 days of August. We thank you for the first half of 2020. And I know it may seem odd for us to be thanking you for a, a world that is just gone mad, it seems. But Lord, we're thankful for every day. We're thankful for every opportunity that we have to uh, share your love, share your light, share your grace and mercy with those around us. Lord, help us all to be that perfect reflection of the life that, that Jesus gave for us. Lord, that we might be that shining light on a hill for all the world to see the, the wonderful uh, graces of following you and to be called Christians. Lord, even though that we strive to do what is right and to live the best life, we fall short. Lord, we all humbly ask you to forgive us where we have failed you. Lord, we ask for your, for your wisdom, your encouragement, the direction of the Holy Spirit today and in the days to come, if we are so blessed, Lord, that we might be better servants for you. Lord, I ask you from the bottom of my heart today, please make things better so that we might be able to gather back in church again one day soon. But until that day comes, I ask you to bless our time that we gather together, bless our time of personal prayer and reflection each day. Lord, help us to not be impatient, but to uh, accept what is given to us and make the most of it. Lord, we thank you especially for your son, Jesus, who came and lived on this earth for 30-something years. And Lord, we thank you for your holy word, who we can use each day to remind us of how we ought to live. It's a perfect roadmap to eternity so that we can be back in your presence one day. 
Lord, we love you and we thank you and we honor you today. And it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, I want to uh, just to remind everybody, uh, you see it on the screen there if you're watching, uh, that we're going to be reading from the 18th chapter of Luke today. And it's a, a, it's a familiar scripture that, uh, that we've preached from before, and I'm sure everyone knows fairly well, reminder. But uh, something that uh, kind of struck me this week was uh, so I was watching uh, TV, and there was a speaker that came on uh, the, con the convention this week. And, uh, and before you uh, start raising your eyebrows, this is not a political message. Uh, this is not uh, promoting any one side. But... Uh, over the last two weeks, we saw the conventions, and, and this is one of the ones that that really struck me in the heart, and uh, I think will leave a lasting memory. Uh, and even if you didn't see it on the convention, you've probably seen it on the news that uh, there was uh, a Catholic nun, Sister Deidre Dee Dee Byrne. Uh, Catholic nun and religious sister. Uh, she was had previously uh, served as a surgeon, a retired army officer, and a missionary. And in part of her speech, she said this, as a physician, I can say without hesitation, life begins at conception. While what I have to say may be difficult for some to hear, I am saying it because I am not just pro-life. I am pro-eternal life. Hear that again. I am saying it because I'm not just pro-life. I am pro-eternal life. I want us all to end up in heaven together someday. End quote. Now, you don't hear that on television very often. Uh, and for obvious reasons, uh, I think you can understand why that uh, really stood out to me. And it really hit me in the heart. Uh, you hear uh, the terms uh, pro-choice, pro-life a lot. But I don't know that I've ever heard it put quite like that. I am pro-eternal life. And uh, certainly, uh, if you've read the scripture, uh, you know where that what may be leading. But uh, I just want to remind you something that I've shared with you before. Uh, one of my earliest involvements in leadership of an organized church, I was in my 20s. We... Uh, Got a new pastor. His name was Philip McVeigh. Uh, he was a, a hot shot young preacher in the 80s, and uh, we were fortunate enough to get him. And he came into a church that uh, not many years prior to that had a thousand people in it every Sunday. Well, when he got there, there was a hundred. So somewhere along the lines, we had lost 900 members in about 10 years or attendees, I would say. And uh, so we went off to a weekend retreat and we set out on uh, drafting a mission statement and a vision statement for the church. And it just so happened that I didn't have a clue about what I was doing, but I suggested a, a statement uh, about five minutes into the meeting. And ironically, the church ended up adopting that mission statement for the church. Now, I don't remember exactly what it said, but over the years, I have uh, 
come across lots and lots of vision statements, mission statements in church and in businesses. Most have one. Uh, but it wasn't a, a, a few years into my ministry, uh, about 10 years ago, I came to the conclusion that, uh, that all that, that's great and wonderful. But uh, my personal mission statement really uh, became very simple. And, and it was much like Sister Burns' uh, quote was, and simply my mission statement is uh, to get to heaven and take as many people with me as I can. Now, going back to uh, a couple messages earlier this summer, you know, that's maybe easier said than done. But that's, I think that's really what we all want, or at least what most of us want. And th that re leads us to uh, the scripture for today. And it's in Luke 18, uh, starting uh, in verse 18. Luke 18, 18. And we're going to go through verse 30. And scripture says... A certain rich young ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, for no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother. All these things I have kept since I was a boy, the rich young ruler said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the rich young ruler heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, then who can be saved? Jesus replied, that what is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left all we had to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. <clears throat> May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word today. Now, I, I want to read those last two words, last two verses to you. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. Well, that is a, a great promise and something that I want us to take to heart today and, and think about that. Certainly the first story that comes uh, to my mind and, and maybe yours too is the, the story of Job. Job, who, who lost everything. Now, he didn't necessarily give it up willingly, but he nonetheless, he, he lost everything and stayed committed and faithful to God, and God restored him many times over. Now, you will find slightly differing stories in Matthew and Mark. Uh, the main difference is here in, well, not the main difference, but the first difference is right off. 
uh, is, is in Luke, we read, he calls him good teacher. But in Matthew and Mark, it starts out by saying, teacher, what good thing must I do? A little different there. So it just goes to show you, that, it, it, and not that it really matters that much, but it's just a little bit of uh, nuances to the different uh, gospels. He says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It's like something that can be passed down from your parents or from one generation to another. In other words, how can I earn my way to heaven? What can I do to be saved? I know where I want to end up, but not really sure how to get there. And that's the rich young ruler talking. So he's talking about doing and earning and working his way to heaven, to eternal life. And he calls Jesus good here in Luke. Jesus was not minimizing his own goodness, which we all would agree. Jesus was perfect. And so he wasn't trying to minimize that, but he was directing of the focus of this rich young ruler toward the need of him to place his total reliance on God himself, the only one who can give the gift of eternal life. Now think about that for just a second. Now I know that we all, uh, within the sound of my voice, believe in God, have faith in God, and we trust God. We trust God to do what is right, to do what is best for us, simply because he loves us. But what I said a minute ago takes things to a, a different level. Would you be able to say, that you have not only faith in God, but trust in God, but total reliance on God to provide everything that you are, everything that you have, everything that you need. Now that's a, that, that's, that's a tough statement to make, but that's exactly what Jesus is asking for. He wants total reliance on us directed towards God. And he goes on to list the commandments dealing with interactions with each other. The rich young ruler confesses that he has been faithful to those commandments since age 13. Thereabouts, we think. It doesn't say that. But uh, in the Jewish faith, that's when uh, the Jewish uh, boys go from being a child to a young man. It's an age of accountability. And he uh, acknowledged that he checked all the boxes, followed all the rules. He didn't murder. He didn't commit adultery. He didn't steal. He didn't lie or give false testimony. He didn't defraud, he didn't covet, and he uh, honored his father and mother. He did all those things. But then in verse 21, the, the, the first sentence in that verse, a lot of people overlook. So Jesus looked at him after he responded. He looked at the rich young ruler. He looked at him and he loved him. I can just imagine the eyes of Jesus looking upon this rich young man. He loved him. He had compassion for him. He cared for him. I think 
what we're seeing described here is a great love for somebody who Jesus knows is about to make a bad decision. Yeah, it doesn't say that. That's just my opinion of what I'm reading. But I think Jesus was saddened because he loved this young man who was about to walk away from something a million times more valuable than he could even imagine. But Jesus goes on to say, one thing you lack, go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Go and sell everything you have and give it to the poor. And then you will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. Now asking somebody who doesn't have much to give up a little bit doesn't really seem like a lot. But you know, somebody who has either, uh, somebody who has a lot, I can just, it's hard for me to imagine being in his shoes, but just, let's just all think about that for just a second, where we are today. I don't think any of us would be considered a rich young ruler. I don't think any of us would be considered rich. Now, in, uh, in terms of the wealth of the world today, all of us are rich. But compared to what we see, the Wall Street bankers, the wealthy movie stars and all that, okay, so maybe we're not so rich comparatively, but we can consider all the people of the world, we're very rich. And just think, if we were in that person's shoes today, if Jesus asked us to do exactly that, and I know we've talked about this before, but it's just hard for us to wrap our heads around. The rich young ruler went away saddened. He was very disappointed. You see, he had great wealth and, was, and that wealth was obviously very dear and important to him. As I said, we're not sure whether he inherited it, which is most likely due to his young age, but he may have worked very hard for it. We just don't know. But what we do know is that he was unwilling to part with it, even for the chance to follow Jesus and have eternal life. Jesus, being the great physician, diagnosed the rich young ruler. His primary issue was his great wealth. That is all we know. It was his millstone around his neck. It was his thorn in his side. It was his great stumbling block. And Jesus saw it right off. Jesus's prescription for him was to get rid of it. Easier said than done, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine if we were in his shoes, what would we do? Now, one thing that I want to remind everybody before everybody starts getting nervous or where this is going. In this scripture, Bible scholars agree that Jesus was not, uh, there was no indication here that Jesus was directing this prescription as a cure for all Christians or all people. They say, think it only applies to those who may be suffering from the same spiritual problem. And I think that's something that, that only we as individuals can answer. Is, is money, is wealth, is, is it a problem? And uh, so I want to ask you a question. Let's just say, for example, 
that every one of us are tithing exactly 10%. That's exactly what the Bible requires of us. That's what scripture says. God requires 10% of our first fruits off the top, not what's left. 10%. And, 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 that's, and that's great and wonderful if each, and, each of us were doing that. But let's just say that some of us, or let's just say all of us, are able to give more without hurting us one bit. If we're just hoarding more and more and more and not sharing that well. I think then we might have a problem. Nonetheless, what Jesus is, is trying to get across to this rich young ruler is that uh, for him to allow uh, wealth and money, possessions, what, whatever that uh, representation of wealth means, in this person's life is preventing him from having total reliance on God and following Jesus. And he wants him to get rid of that problem. And this person is reluctant to do that. He tells this young man that by doing this, he will store up for himself treasures in heaven. This represents the gift of eternal life and salvation. This treasure is not to be earned by following the rules, practicing the discipline of self-denial, or giving away one's hard-earned material possessions. It is a gift from God to be received simply by following Jesus. Well, I admit, Following Jesus may not be the easiest thing to do all the time, but it certainly is the most rewarding thing that we will ever do in our lifetime. Listening to Jesus' advice and removing the thorn in his side, the rich young ruler would have eliminated the obstacle standing between him and trusting and following Jesus, thus inheriting the gift of eternal life with God. Is it an easy thing to do? Certainly not. Maybe impossible for some, as we see with the rich young ruler. So difficult, Jesus compared the rich man inheriting eternal life to a camel going through the eye of a sewing needle. Without glasses, I cannot even get a thread through a sewing needle. And even with glasses, sometimes I still can't do it. You see, the camel was the largest land animal and the eye of the needle was the smallest opening in Jesus's day. It was a stark contrast that all could understand. But all who may have this or another stumbling block in our lives, please do not become discouraged or walk away with a sad look with our head hung low. While this may seem impossible to us at times, Jesus reassures us, with God, all things are possible. Paul also tells us, in Philippians 4.13, all things are possible through Christ who gives us strength. And if you, if you want to uh, discount that all things are possible, just think about who's talking to you right now. Most of my younger days, no one would have ever thought that I would be delivering a sermon from a pulpit and most of all, me. But here I am. Uh, may not be the traditional 
pulpit, but nonetheless, I'm here speaking to you today. And Jesus completes this passage with the following response to the outspoken Peter, who was reminding Jesus that all the disciples, including himself, had left everyone and everything to follow him. Verse 29 and 30 says, Truly I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come, which is eternal life. God has blessed me so much in my lifetime. I can tell you from experience that Jesus' diagnosis for the rich young ruler will work. Whatever our problems are, if we will set them aside and follow Jesus completely, we will also reap the greatest reward ever, the gift of eternal life by following and trusting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Billy Graham used to uh, say these very simple words at the end of his message. And if you're interesting, interested in following Jesus, maybe for the first time, or maybe you're interested in rededicating your life, maybe you realize that you have a stumbling block in your life, like the rich young ruler had. Pray this very simple prayer. It says, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I repent and turn away from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust you and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In my name, in your name, I pray. Amen. That simple and sincere prayer is all it takes to be saved. If you prayed that prayer today, I invite you to reach out to me or someone you trust and tell them. Allow them to pray for you or allow us to pray for you, encourage you, support you in the days ahead. I would uh, caution you about realizing this and walking away with a head hung low like the rich young ruler. I would encourage you with all my heart and all my being to realize and admit that we have a stumbling block and that we need to follow Jesus. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of the rich young ruler. Lord, I ask you to give us a, a strong desire in our hearts, not just to be pro-life, but for us all to be pro-eternal life. Lord, that we may get to heaven one day and take as many people with us as we can. All these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, Joey. Uh, thank you, Joe. Amen to that message this morning. Thank you for that wonderful word today. Our closing hymn this morning is going to be, Precious Lord, Take My Hand.
Back to you, sir. Well, thank you, Joey, and thank you for the good music today. And uh, what a blessed day it is. And uh, now I would just like to say, uh, I'd like to ask that the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abound in everyone's lives today and in the days to come. Lord, I ask you to help us. Help us to find our way to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.